How wonderful it is to see you again, gents. Thank, Thank you, you so much for coming today. Thank you so much for everybody here within the church. It's lovely to see you. We may be few in numbers, but we're big in heart. Lovely to see all you people watching us online. We're so pleased that we can bring these services to you at home, that you're not feeling isolated so much or cut off, that you can join in with our services. Big thank you to Pauline, who will be our online host today, answering all your questions in the comment box. And an extra big thank you to our friend Todd, who is manning the camera today. So, without further ado, I would like to hand the service over to these two fine, upstanding gentlemen and ask for the opening blessing, please. Thank you. Let us for a moment be quiet and sit within the silence and please join me in an opening prayer. Infinite Spirit, God of love, in whom we live and move and have our being, we thank you for the opportunity of being able to come together in communion in this beautiful sanctuary. And we ask, Father God, that we know you are the power and the love within everything that exists in this universe. Help us to continue to seek the nectar of your love, your truth, your understanding, your forgiveness, and your compassion, so that we may be able to take that out into our everyday lives and send it to each and every one that we come into contact with. We know that we are living in difficult times at this moment, and yet we know that in time all will be well again, and we shall move into that new vibration where we hope and pray that people will be kinder to each other, will be more compassionate and more loving than in the past. For we know that we must take some of that responsibility for the way that we have treated Mother Earth in the past. Help us then to mend our ways and to realise that instead of always wanting to take, we shall learn to give, to give to all that we come into contact with. And now we invite those loved ones from the higher realms of life to join us for our service this afternoon and ask that each and every one of them will join us in communion so that that communion may be of the very highest and best. This we ask in your name, Eternal Father, which is forever loving and lasting love. Amen. Thank you. That prayer was so beautiful and so very apt. Before I'd ask you to join in with the Lord's Prayer, please, we'll just make room. There's a couple of late arrivals. If you'd like to make your way in and take a seat, please. Lovely. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So, if you'd like to join together, please, in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thine will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And leave us not when in temptation, but deliver us from all evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Thank you. And now I would like to ask Al to share his reading for today with us. Thank you, Al. Well, it's good morning, or oh, good afternoon. Good I afternoon. From him and good afternoon <laughs> from me. I must have slept late this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff has written the, or sat down and wrote the uh, reading for today. He was inspired to do this. So uh, it's simply entitled, Everything Has Its Purpose. In this difficult world that we live in, we find that it gives us an opportunity to explore the realities of life upon this earth plane and the reason for our presence here. The coronavirus has brought with it devastation and yet 
opportunities at the same time. Looking back over history, the negative things such as wars, drought, famine, etc., that have all taken place have not only left a bad effect on life, but also a silver lining given mankind a new beginning. Wars over time have shaped our history and helped us to learn that there are no winners in this situation. Living in peace with each other, with our brothers and sisters, makes the world a happier and safer place to live in. And through all of the upheavals brings humanity closer. Positive energy can then flourish in what is often a very negative world. So there is a greater opportunity to grow both in physical sense, but most importantly of all, in a spiritual way. Knowing and progressing on a spiritual pathway helps us to prepare for the next stage of our journey in the higher realms of light. This journey tells us that there is a purpose to everything that we experience in this life. And in the world we chose to inhabit. This brings us on a firmer and fuller understanding of that great power that we call God. And that lies within each and every one of us and in all life, not only in this world, but in the entire universe. It gives us a greater understanding and shows us that there is a purpose to everything within our lives. This is no coincidence. Life is eternal. And the next time I do the reading, I'll remember to change my glasses and put my reading glasses on. <laughs> so here's Jeff. <laughs> He's getting old, you know. Good afternoon. Yeah. Lovely yeah. to see you all. Well, I was kind of inspired. I was sitting down one day uh, a few weeks ago, and I was thinking, of why are we having to go through all of this coronavirus and all the problems that go along with it? And all of a sudden, I was inspired from Spirit to write this down. And that's exactly what they told me, that everything has its purpose. That may be hard for us to understand at this present time, when things are rather difficult for us. We can't mix with too many people. Even our families, we've got to be careful if they live away. We can't travel uh, to be with them. And life can be sometimes a little bit difficult. But you know, if we look back in history, from the beginnings of time, change took place all of the time. There was a purpose to every change that took place. You know, centuries ago, if we look at back in history, we find that mountains that we see today were under the ocean, under the seas, because we found fossils within these mountains, which tell us that they were at one time under the oceans. And so change came about so that those mountains would be pushed up out of the ocean. And so there was a purpose to that, because there had to be a change. And of course, if we look back in our history to religions, there, was, there has always been many different branches of religions, but you know, each one has its purpose. We may not always agree with their way of thinking, but we have to agree that they have their purpose in life. And no matter what level we are at, other people may not be at the same level, but that level is right for them. So there is a purpose in that level for them. World wars, my goodness me, do we ever learn in life that wars are futile, that there are no winners, and yet, in saying that, out of every war, becomes, there comes a purpose. And you might think to yourself, well, why, how on earth can you say there's a purpose that comes out of war? You know, I remember in the Second World War, when Al and I were born in 1940, oh, you can count now, um, <laughs> and the war was taking place until 1945, 
and going into the air raid shelters and all of that. I remember everything, you know. But I remember how close it brought people together. You know, I remember my mother having a neighbour coming in and saying, Mrs Potts, uh, could you give me a cup full of sugar and I'll give you a little bit of butter to exchange with, you know. And we did things like that without even thinking about it because we cared for our fellow brother and sister. There was a purpose there, you see. And that bringing people together was the great purpose of the war. Of course, we don't like wars, as I said, they're futile. But, you know, there is a purpose to this today. Jesus himself, you know, came to this earth plane, and Jesus was the most amazing medium, teacher, healer, you name it. Jesus had all the gifts of the Spirit. And you only have to look at the Gospel according to St. Paul's, the gifts of the Spirit, to see the purpose that Jesus had coming to this earth plane. To teach us that the gifts of the Spirit are there for each and every one of us to learn. Jesus didn't say, I am the only one with these gifts. What did he say? I may not have the words exactly right, but I know it's like this. Whatsoever I shall do, ye shall do also, but greater things than I have done, ye shall do. He didn't say, I am the only one with these gifts. And you know, there is a purpose to the gifts. But how many times do we use those gifts for the good of our fellow brothers and sisters, for the good of mankind, for the good of the planet? For, as Al said in his opening prayer, when we look at the way greed has come into our world, where men are cutting down rainforests, the habitat for the wonderful wild animals. Those wild animals that have the same purpose to be here on this earth plane as we do. And they bring so much to this world. And yet man either ignores the purpose that they, and the reason that they are here, or they don't care. They think only of money and greed for power and control. How very sad, because you see, if we don't grasp that purpose, that everything in this universe has its purpose, from the tiniest grain of sand, the tiniest insect, to the largest animal, to the mountains, the oceans, the skies, everything has its purpose for the good of this planet and for the good of all of our brothers and sisters in our world, no matter the colour of their skin, their creed, their denomination, it matters not. It is a purpose for each and every one that we can grow and develop spiritually and take that step forward in our spiritual pathway. That surely is the purpose that we came to this earth plane. Although when I look around today, I think there are, and sadly, there are very few people that seem to realise the reason that they chose to come to this earth plane. So that they, could, they could learn from the many, many various lessons that we have to face on this earth plane. Those lessons which we chose because we knew there was a purpose in those lessons that we, if we faced them, could grow and progress from those lessons. And so, once again, a purpose, a wonderful purpose. And this is what spirits were trying to get through to me when I sat down quietly and got this reading from them. And so, do we realise, I know we do in spiritualism, I have to say, and I mean this, that we are so very fortunate to be spiritualists and to belong to this amazing movement which has so much knowledge for us to learn if we will only open our hearts and our minds to that knowledge. And you know, other religions, I'm not knocking them, I'm not saying that they don't have something we can learn because you see, I'm a great believer that we should never turn our backs on anything. We have an opportunity to learn and grow from all religions, for there is a truth within each and every one of them. 
but I have to say in all honesty, there is a greater truth in spiritualism. Because whilst other religions may preach to us that they believe in something after death, they don't believe that we have a right to communicate with the living spirit of the person who was moved to that next dimension in the spirit world. And yet, Jesus himself communicated with spirit. Many of the great masters and teachers that touched this earth plane over the years have communicated with spirit. The high priestesses in Egypt many, many centuries ago communicated with the higher life. You know, if you ever watch an animal, my friends, I'm sure many of you have noticed this, if there has been a sensing of a spirit person in a room, the way the coat stands up, you know, and cats and dogs, they know, they know what it's all about, you know. We often say the poor dumb animals, there's nothing dumb about animals, my friend, I tell you, we have so much that we can learn from the animals. So there is a purpose in the animals being here upon this earth thing. And so we have the opportunity as spiritualists to show our purpose here upon this earth plane. Do we just turn our backs on it and say, oh, it doesn't matter, who am I? I can't help anybody else. I don't realise that I've got a reason to be here, so why should I bother? Well, it's very, very easy, isn't it, my friends, to do that. That's a great cop-out and it's so easy to do. And unfortunately in our world today, we see with the coronavirus, where many of our young people, and I'm sorry if there are young people in here, I'm not knocking them, but where on the television today, many of the young people are not taking any notice of the rules and regulations over this virus. And so even though they may not get it seriously, they can pass it on to people of my age. You're a lot younger, of course, I can see that. <laughs> we'll not touch that one, shall we? And so, you see, there again, there's the, there is the purpose. There is the reason. Are we all taking notice of that? If we want this world to be a better place, and believe me, we need it to be a better place at this time. I don't think I can ever remember, apart from the war, um, the Second World War, going through anything quite like this before. And you know, there will be a purpose to this, although we may not be able to see it at this very moment. But you know, I have noticed already how much kinder people are being to one another. That's something which costs us nothing. And yet in our everyday lives, we tend to let it go by the wayside. You know, we can see someone who's maybe collapsed in a street. And what do we do straight away? We think, oh, they're drunk. We don't stop to think that person may need our help. And we have a purpose in life to do that. To share what we have with everyone we come in contact with. Now it's never, never going to be totally easy because you are all, always going to get the ones that don't want to bother don't care you know you can't help me sort of thing but that doesn't mean to say that we should give up we should never give up our true purpose in this life as that is to make this world a better place for all of our brothers and sisters in, so that when we move to that next level of existence in the spirit world we can at least go knowing that we did our very best to leave behind a better world than what we came into and so i would ask you just now to think a little bit about that you know and to think have i done what I really should do in this life? Have I made the most of this opportunity that God has given us to touch this earth plane? And we can turn around obviously and say, well, my life hasn't been all that brilliant. I've had to put up with terrible things in my life. But you know, I may have said this before, but if we can turn it around and say, well, we were given opportunities opportunities to learn and to grow 
from those things that have happened in our lives. Yes, they may feel terrible at the time, but we always, almost always, get over them. And if we can look at them with a positive light instead of a negative light, and if we can look at them with that positive light, light and say, I will get over this, and everything will be better and it will grow, that I had to have that purpose in life to go through them so that I could grow spiritually and so that I could go forward on my spiritual pathway through this life. So let's look upon these. this time, although it's difficult, and although many people may have loved, lost loved ones to the world of spirit, yes, and my friends, at this time, and please don't pick me up wrong, but they are probably in the better place at this moment. They don't have this to put up with. They don't have to worry about what's going to happen tomorrow. They are there to take care and to show love and compassion to each and every one of us. They can do that without having the physical problems and the problems in this earth thing to contend with. And so we have just lost a dear, dear friend this last week. And although it's very sad, of course it's sad. We can never take that away. But he's not suffering any longer. So why should I be sad when he's out of his pain and suffering? Free from all that. He's free to go forward with his life in the world of spirit. With a new purpose to his life. A purpose where he will still continue to grow, still continue to experience and to learn so that he can continue to move forward on that spiritual pathway. So let's remember that purpose in this life that spirit, spiritualism and my helpers were good enough to give me. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Wonderful. Uh, those are people that know me. I love passion. I love that passion, and thank you. <laughs> Not that passion. <laughs> anyway, before we degrade into a vaudeville show here today, <laughs> we're now going to move over to that time dedicated to healing. And of course, we all need healing. We all know people that need healing at this time. And we know that this world and the inhabitants, be it plant, animal, vegetable, mineral, matters not. We are all part of the one thread of the divine. All need healing, especially at this time. So I'd just like to make yourselves comfortable, please. Just try and let go all the little worries, all the little niggles, all these little things that drag down our energies. Just let them go for this short time. Just hear that bird sound that we can hear now within the church. Hear that contact with nature. And know that this world, this magnificent dwelling, was created for us, for us to experience this phase of our eternal life. And as you do so, please just look at your breathing, focus on that. And as you do, you just feel your body going into that natural rhythm. And then within your mind's eye, as summer draws to a close, we just join in this time in that beautiful garden once more, with plants and trees, flowers, flowing rivers, all the beauty and marvel of Mother Nature. And as you wander and explore, this beautiful place, I'd like you to hold dear in your mind's eye those that you know who need healing, be it friend or foe, it matters not. And understand and trust and know that as you send out those healing thoughts towards these dear ones, you too will also be healed. So we leave you now, just in this short time, just to link in, just to relax and be as one with all. God bless you all.
and now as you gently return to your full state of consciousness just bring back with you that healing energy that healing balm enrobed by your love for others and express freely and given in gratitude and humbleness amen and now, without further ado, I shall hand over once more to these two fine, upstanding gentlemen for their demonstration today. <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. I was having difficulty upstanding, I can no. tell you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was a bit surprised when Jeff talked about uh, the war when we were born. I mean, I'm just 39, you know. It's <laughs> That's the age you've but he, he, he forgot to tell you that my mother, carried, when she carried him out to the area shelter, she dropped him. And he's never been quite the same since, but there you go. <laughs> I know whilst I've been sitting down, I've had a lovely lady with me. Uh, Jeff and I work quite differently. He always seems to know where he's going to. <laughs> I very rarely do, but I've had a lady with me. I feel as though I know where I'm going. But this lovely lady, uh, well, actually, I've not only just had uh, the lady come in, I've had a, a father and a mother, so there's three come in together. I feel I'm with the gentleman down here, sure. but bear with me because I'm not 100% sure yet. But I feel that, Father, if I look at you, you, you have quite a resemblance to your father, yes. sir. Because of the way he's coming through, he's coming through as quite a strong gentleman, but um, though he was strict at times, uh, he was a, a, a kind of a gentle soul, if you know what I mean. Yeah. It was, uh, he had a good heart, sir. But he said, you know, in my day, you had to be firm, you know, you had to be strong. Because yeah. uh, that was the time he lived in, you see. And I also... And the lady that's with him is a loving lady. She's a lovely lady. I feel mum uh, uh, with you. And I feel that she was cuddly but not excessive, if you know what I mean, sir. Um, and I'm sensing her, not seeing her. Uh, I feel about my height a little. It could be one way or the other. But she, I'm not getting a six-footer, you know. Um, and I'm feeling, again, cuddly in the build of body. Uh, nice uh, grey hair. But I would say more like collar length. I, I'm not sensing that, she, that it's down her back. You know what I mean? A lovely lady. And I feel that mom and mother and father had a great understanding between them. You know, I'm not saying, hey, they were human. I'm not saying they always agreed, but they always had a great understanding. But there's a lady they've brought in with them who is a lovely lady. I'm sensing her too, but I'm sensing too that she was, ooh, I feel that I'm very close to you, sir. I feel it could be a partner, a wife, because that's the feeling she's giving me. And again, a, a, a very sweet, lovely lady, sir. But I don't feel this lady, I don't want to upset you, sir. I don't feel she's been gone to the spirit world very long. Does that make sense to you? Because I felt when she, she came first, and I felt that it was almost like she was hesitating because I don't know if she's been through before, but I, f I felt that she was finding, finding her feet, if you get what I mean, finding her way of how to communicate. But I know that this lady suffered before she went to the spirit world, sir. And that was the most upsetting thing for you yes. because she did suffer quite a lot. But you know what she's saying to me? I didn't know anything about it. You did, but I didn't know anything about it because I was already on my way. Yes. And isn't that a lovely thing to know yes, that yes. we sit and we suffer more through watching our loved ones suffer and yet they're already leaving their body so they're not aware of it and she said I'm sorry I had to make you suffer so much you know but she said it, it couldn't be helped you know um, I'm looking at this beautiful young lady oh, thank you. and um, <laughs> well you've got lovely eyes I can't tell you full of 
<laughs> and I'm sure you are beautiful. But I feel that, that this lovely lady too had a beautiful face. And if I go back, there should be a photograph of this lovely lady when she was a young lady. Yes. And she was quite a beautiful lady. And, and I know that you still got that. And you know that you often look at it because we all look back, don't yes. we? That's what life's all about. That's the memories. But she says, you know what? I don't want you to, to get upset. She says, I'm absolutely fine. Mm -hmm. You know what? She said, I couldn't wait to shake off that body. I couldn't wait. It was so painful for me. It's so awful. And now I could actually get up and dance. <laughs> because I do believe when you were younger she liked to dance. Sir. She did. Yeah. She did. Can you hear me all right, sir? Can you hear her nicely? Uh, it's not very good. I've got to have them tested. Oh, okay. I'll try to speak a bit, a bit louder. Okay. <laughs> I just didn't want to blow you off your seat, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she said she liked to, to dance when she was younger, and I believe you both did as yes, well. I did. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. But she said, you know. They were different times, yeah. and we adapted as we went through life. But you know, I, I feel this is your daughter, yes. sir, um, she, because she just wanted to come and put her arms around both of you. So I knew that it had to be your daughter, though she, she didn't say that to me, but she indicated that it was your daughter. <laughs> and I know that it's been tough for you too, darling, yeah. and that she says that sh thank you for the support that you've given your dad. Because she said, you know, it would have been very difficult without that support. But you've been there for him. She said, I am so proud, she said. I am so proud. Because she said, you know, it's never easy for anybody, but you took it quite badly. And she said she's very happy that you're both attempting to get back on your feet again and actually doing very well. <coughs> <coughs> I don't know who around you, darling, is suffering. <coughs> They're making me cough with their chest. Yeah. You know that yeah. because <coughs> they're just trying to put it on me and I don't want them to put it on me. Yeah. But I'm just saying, take it, take that away, please. And she's talking to me about somebody called Dorothy on the earth plane. Can you place me Dorothy on the earth plane? Oh, I, I, I called her Dot. Dot. That's short. Oh, well, that's, yeah, that's fine because she just said Dorothy. I can't say that she told me Dot because she didn't but she said Dorothy well if that's fine I've got the evidence that I wanted of her name because I was asking tell me your name you know and it came very slowly then she said that but you know I don't know you know your father I feel was in the military at one time sir uh, he was in a boys brigade band boys brigade I just seen a, a uniform you oh, see yes, yes a uniform with a cap yeah because that's, he just wanted to show me that for a bit of evidence, you see. And I took it to be military, but it's similar, you know. The boys' brigade, it's all us growing up and doing what we wanted to do. But again, a hard worker, your dad. Very hard worker. But, you know, he said... I, it's easy to say because he said everybody did in those days. But, you know, I, I, I tell you what, I have also, before I go, and I know I'm looking at your leg and I'm not going to say anything about that, but um, suddenly I'm having a, a difficulty in my, with my right foot. And I feel, I don't know if Dad suffered with his feet before he passed to the spirit world. He used to have a lot of uh, calluses and hard skin. Uh, hard to walk with. Well, hard to walk with. That's why, because it was, it was making me just, you know, be careful how I put my feet on the ground. Both that. Both that. Well, it's, it's <laughs> we all inherit something, don't we? It's something. Not always the things that we want. You know? <laughs> I just know that your lovely wife. She said she'll be through quite a lot more, uh, because she she's getting used to how to communicate. She's talking to me about, before I leave you, about some anniversaries, and I want to go to the month of May. There should be some birthdays or anniversaries in the month of yeah. May. I'm trying to ask her if she'll give me a date. I want to go around about the middle of May, darling. Does that make sense? Yeah. 
about the 16th or 17th, mm -hmm. somewhere around about there. Okay, yeah. and then she's also t t just shouted out November. So there's something yes. coming up in November, yes. and that's special. Okay, will you take the love of your mum and dad and your lovely wife, and thank you for speaking up, and your mum too. Yes. Thank, thank you. you very much. I'm sorry, sir, but he's so shy, you see. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming to my lady here, hello. hello. Why stan has been going on there. I've had a, a lovely lady with me and I'm feeling very much on the motherly link. She hasn't told me that yet, but I feel with the energy that's coming towards you, it feels like a mother's energy. And I feel not seeing her, I'm sensing her, but somewhere around my height, she might've been a little taller, a little shorter, but I'm not up in the six feet, no. definitely not. Nice and cuddly in the build of body, not a large lady, but nicely covered if you understand. <clears throat> Nice skin with this lady as well, darling. Yeah. And I feel that she kept this right until the end almost, you know. She was quite proud of it. But uh, she just said to me, hey, I was no shrinking violet. Yeah. <laughs> I have to be careful what I say up here, you know. Because <laughs> we always want to make them look lovely as well, you know. But she said, I was no shrinking violet. I could put them in their place if I had to. Absolutely. And she says, oh boy, I did it on many occasions, you know. But she did it with a good heart, you know. She said, I did it with a good heart because I wanted to show an example to my family, you know, because I wanted them to grow up knowing right from wrong, you know. And this is the, what, the way she felt about it, you see. I don't know why when I was sat down there, darling, I kept being taken to Ireland. I don't know if that means anything to you. Um, her mother was Irish. Her, oh, well, her mother. Yeah. Well, that's all right. Because I know they just kept taking me to Ireland, you see. And I'm thinking, well, why are you taking me there, you know? But of course, that's all right, because there is a connection there, you see. That's fine. Also, darling, just a moment. This lovely lady is telling me <coughs> that I don't feel that she lay on a bed of sickness for years, if you understand me. She said, I went down all of a sudden and whoa, I went down to the spirit world and she said in a way I was so happy that it happened that way that I didn't have to lie on a bed of sickness for years you know she was very happy about that <clears throat> but you know she was quite a private lady in her own way because her business was her business and nothing to do with anybody else around you know the family yeah the family but uh, don't try to get one over on me do you understand? Because you wouldn't win. No. No, you wouldn't win, she said. No. But I don't mean that in a bad way. No. Don't get me wrong, you know, because she was looking after her family and say a word against her family and get out of the way, you know? But I like her. I see, I like people that call a spade a spade, not a mm -hmm. shovel. And she certainly did, you know. <clears throat> now, I don't feel this lady the way she's coming to me had lots and lots of jewellery darling but what she had i feel she really enjoyed you know yeah. she had, and she's saying you are you must know the whereabouts of some of the jewellery belonging to to this lady and she's taken me to a wedding ring darling do you understand why she's taken me to a wedding ring not really no well there must be somewhere around you darling where a wedding ring has come off a finger i think she lost her wedding ring before she died because she ended up in her own. Oh. I think it was well, I know she kept doing that to me, you see, and that usually means that the wedding ring has come off. I mean, I was yes. taking out that you maybe had had it, you see, mm -hmm. but okay, that's me. And as long as you understand that okay, anyway, yes. <clears throat> trying to get her to give me a name. Come on, give me a name. Um, Donny, who, somebody around you has been suffering with a bit of either rheumatism or arthritis in the hands. It's not you. No. It's not you, I know that. But there's somebody around you that's suffering with it. It's not really bad at the moment. It's somebody close to you, darling. If you, think about that. Sure if, you, if you can yeah. ask, okay. because it's possibly more on a friendship link right. than it is a family link, right. you know? But I feel it's a person, perhaps going to see more our ages, but you're younger than us anyway. So, um, but just keep an eye on it, will you? Yes, and I know, I don't know, but she's telling me you could do healing. Yes, so when that comes up, just, it, of course it's difficult now because we can't touch, but you can still send that energy out to her. Uh, the month of June must mean something to you, darling, because I keep hearing in my ear. Sorry? She was born in June. She was born in June, that's all right, lovely. But also the month of December must mean something as well, darling. Um, 
There must be an anniversary or a birthday, a wedding anniversary or a birthday in that month. It might be outside of family, I don't I know. Have to think about that one. Yes, yeah, just hold on to it because I know she said it very much in my ear there, you know. It may go back a long while, you might have to check it out, you know. Now, just a moment, where are you taking me? Oh God, she's taking me to London. Don't ask me why. That's where I come from. Oh, that's where you come from. Okay, then. I don't know why, I just thought, well, what are you taking me to London for, you know? Okay. Now, she's saying there was a lot of really happy memories, yeah. but also some tough times as well, she said. Don't make it all, you know, beautiful and lovely and wonderful. It was, but we had our times like everybody else, you know, where we had tough times, just like everybody else. But she said there were some wonderful times. And I knew because they were, they're singing to me all the old London song, songs, you know. Um, my old man says follow the van and all of those, you know. And there must have been some really happy times with parties and everything, you know, going back. Um, the, the, I've got somebody that wants to sing to me all the time, a gentleman that wants to sing to me. And I'm going back to those days where if there was a wedding or a party or anything like that, this gentleman would be singing along with everything, with all the music. Uh, who's Albert, darling? Albert? Um, well, the company I worked for in London, there was a gentleman who's quite a character. Well, and he sings and he used to sing it all. That's who I'm talking yeah. about. Because I said to him, come on, who are you? You know, and I just heard Albert. Okay, as long as you can take that, that's lovely, darling. And we'll try and get around as many <laughs> as we possibly can. Will you take the... Darling, she's not worried about your health at the moment. Right. Which I'm happy to say. I'm happy to hear. Happy yeah. to say. She said, but it doesn't mean you haven't got to look after yourself, you know, because I'm keeping a beady eye on you. And you know she is. Yes. <laughs> In the nicest possible way, of course. But she's just saying, keep going the way you're going, because she's very happy with you. Will you take her love and a big cuddle to you as well? God Thank bless you. you. Very much. I think I know where I'm going. <laughs> and, you know, I've, had, I've had somebody singing to me, and I don't sing it because we're not allowed to sing, but um, many of you uh, would remember the song Sally, Gracie Fields. <coughs> Anybody old enough to remember? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Well, I've had somebody singing that to me, but I know I want to be with this lady here, darling. I'm not normally directed, but I just feel I want to go to you. Because I have a lady who tells me she's your grandmother, darling. And I feel I want to be on mother's side of the family, darling. Because we know we all have two. <laughs> but I feel that you knew the, the mother side one a little bit better than the father side one. Does that make sense, darling? Yeah. And I know that this lady, again, Jeff was talking about the character. But I know this lady was quite a character as well, darling. And she was nicely built in the build of body, very upright lady, you know, and a uh, very confident lady, you know. She knew what she wanted and she knew how to get it. And <laughs> But you see, hey, she said a lot of us were in those days too because we had to be, you know, we had to be tough. But, you know, again, a kind heart. You know, she'd do anything for you you know, as long as she could. Um, you know, she said, I wasn't worth a fortune. I couldn't just reach into me purse and give you hundreds, you know. But if I felt you needed something, you would have it. What nice... Actually, I like this lady. She's jolly, you see. I mean, yes, you, you know, as Jeff said before, with that lady, you wouldn't want to cross her. But, you know, hey, that's fine. You know, you, you just tread carefully, don't you? Don't you? <laughs> she's just laughing her head off. She says, don't make me out worse than I was, you know. <laughs> and, and then she'll say, well, well, she says, that's difficult, of course, you know. But I just love her because she's dancing about, she's moving about, she's just so full of life, you know. She said, yeah, just because I snuffed it doesn't mean I lost my life and my life, you know, I'm still full of it, you know. She, that's the way she would say it, you know. But she, just lovely. But she says to me, um, let me get this right because she's placing my hands here. You see, once I was sat down, I was getting short of breath. And I said, is this with you or someone else? And she said, no, me. And I felt that before her passing, 
it was her lungs or uh, and I felt yes she, she said when I was younger I liked the little the little <laughs> ciggy you know no, no usually all peas she said you know if you know what she means by that other people <laughs> she's laughing as she says it but I know that oh she was struggling for her breath at the end but who yeah. oh, she's made me dizzy <laughs> He would say, I'm always dizzy, but there you go. Uh, but I know that she's just, you know, I just, heard, she just shouted out July to me. And there must be anniversaries of birthdays in the month of July, darling. It don't necessarily look on a family link. It could be, it could be a neighbor or a friendship link. But if you can't place it, just hold it, sweetheart. Because I know if they give it, you know, we always give it off. I tell you what, she's making me dizzy. I'm having to hold on. <laughs> She says, she just, she just, I'll tell you what, she's so straightforward, she's saying, get it right. <laughs> but that, then you wouldn't recognise her if she came all sweetie, sweetie, would you? <laughs> but you know, there's somebody around you, darling, that's been having trouble with their legs as well, darling. My mum's just had a knee operation. Oh, right, because I know, and, and that's one of the reasons why she made me hold on for a minute, because my legs were going a bit funny, you know. Oh, Listen, your grandmother says, it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. She says, tell her to stop worrying. She says, she's a, she never stops worrying. Yeah. <laughs> she's giving her a bit of a telling off, isn't she? <laughs> but hey, she's, she means it in the nicest possible way. She talked to me also about someone called George. George? Yeah. Oh, I'm not sure. You're not sure? Just yeah. hang on to it, because she said, yeah. she just mentioned George. Now, it could have, she might have known George more than you do, you know, but yeah. I, I've given it because she's given it to me. And I also, darling, want to say, you see, she said, when you were a little girl, she says, my goodness, she said, I did often take care of it, you know. She said, when you were a little girl, you were quite lively. <laughs> oh, now, fancy saying a thing like that about a sweet lady like you sitting there. <laughs> 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 oh, she said, you were into everything, you were full of fun. And full of laughter, but she said that was part of the joy I had to see you like that, you know. So though often I would tell you off, you know. <laughs> but she said that was part of the joy. Um, ooh, she's bringing into it to me now uh, a gentleman, and I feel I could be on grandfather with this gentleman, but I don't know if you knew grandfather, darling. You didn't. Have you seen the picture of him, darling? Um, I shouldn't ask questions, but no. no. Exactly. You don't think you have well just let me tell you what he's what he what what he's given to me and i feel that he was taller than your grandmother and that he was quite slender in the build of body especially as a young man he didn't carry a lot of weight he even said to the end of my life i never caught i uh, carried a lot of weight is there anybody in the family you could ask darling yeah yeah, yeah. okay and then they might have a photograph, but I know the way I'm seeing him. He's got his suit on. He said, I've come with my suit on and my flat cap. He said, <laughs> you don't usually wear a flat cap with a suit, but he said, that's what I did, you know. And quite a character, a hard worker as well. And he just wants to say, you didn't know me, but I know you. And I'm watching over you. Because he said, just at this moment, you have a little worry about someone, darling. Yeah, nothing serious, but just a little worry. And he says, don't worry, that all clear up. That all clear up and everything will be okay. Now, he's talking to me about, let's see, about, darling, there must have been a child that went to the spirit world quite a long time ago, a while ago now. Come on, tell me what it is. They're saying it's a little boy, darling. You've got it right, okay, as long as you've got it. Because I kept asking, and then she kept saying girl, then she kept saying, no, boy. Mm -hmm. But there was a one, a girl, that went quite a long time before that, darling. So, okay. Yeah. And she just says, stop worrying, because worry doesn't do anybody any good. Yeah, I have a worry. <laughs> she knows, yeah. she knows she's with you, darling. <laughs> and she starts moving things around your house as well, but you know that. Yeah, you see, I'm, I'm sure I didn't put that there, <laughs> but that's lovely. It's just because, you know, you understand, and that's what she knows. Um, will you just take 
the love of this lovely lady and the grandfather that you didn't know. And just know that the minute you think of them, they're there. And thank you for speaking with thank me. You. Coming to my lady right at the back there. Yes, you just yes. turned around. Hello. <laughs> yes. Um, whilst I has been going on there, I've had a lovely lady with me as well. Now I feel I'm sensing, as I say once again, no taller than myself. Uh, nicely rounded in the build of body. Once again, I've got a nice complexion and a nice skin with this lady. And I've got a lady who's telling me that she used to like to look nice, if you understand what I mean. You know, she said, I wore clothes that I felt I looked good in and I felt nice in. You know, she said, you wouldn't catch me going out in the street with rollers or curlers in the hair. No way. Everything had to be nice, you know. And I feel very much with this lady, my darling. She was the same in her home. Now, I'm not meaning you were afraid to sit down, not to that extent. But she liked things in their place, right. you know. Um, you would never go into a house where you would find things just strewn about. No way. That's the way she liked it. Neat and tidy, the same as the mind was very neat and tidy, you know. She was, no, once again, nobody's fool, you know. You couldn't get one over on her. But a very caring and a lo lovely lady. I want to actually call her a lady, because uh, as I'm sensing her, I feel she was very much a lady. Do you understand? Lovely. Um, <laughs> she's making me laugh now. She said, oh, I had my moments. Oh, I had my moments. Don't make me out to be an angel, she said, because I had my moments. Well, we all have our moments, darling, don't we, you know. But on average, she was quite a kind lady, you know, a very loving lady. And you must have meant something very special to her, because, my goodness me, uh, you know, it's like a big heart going around you, you know. She loves you so, and still loves you so very, very much. Um, darling, I don't know who's been suffering with the tummy around you, is it? Because she just put my hand there, you know. And she's just saying, just be very careful of what you eat, that's all. She's not overly worried about it, but just be a little careful of what you eat. Because she's saying, some things seem to agree with you, and some things ooh, you don't. You don't like it, kind of give you a bit of jip, you know. But she's saying, just be careful, that's all. She's not terribly worried. Darling, I don't know if it was mum that suffered with, the back, with her back lower spine, yeah. because she's put my hand in. When they do that, I usually know that's what they mean. And down the legs as well, I feel I had a little bit of trouble towards the latter part of my life getting around. I got around, but, oh, sometimes it took a bit of doing, you know. And she said it was sometimes quite painful, you know, bless her. But she said, that's all gone, thank goodness, you know. Darling, she's telling me you have a bit of trouble with your back as well. Yes. Yes, she's saying, just be careful how you bend, darling. Yes. Me too, and I'll... And I tend to do that, you know, and it's the worst thing you can do, <laughs> bend the knees. She's saying, yeah, just bend the knees. But once again, she's not terribly worried about it, darling. But she's just saying sometimes, get your feet up, will you? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say that's an order, you know. But she's just saying, will you tell her sometimes to get her feet up? Yeah. Okay, I've told her now, Mum. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's made Mum happy as well, that she's asked you just to get your feet up a little bit, you know. But she liked her jewellery as well, didn't oh, she, yes. Mum? And she had some one or two nice pieces, she's telling me. And either you have them or you know where they are. You've got them. Because I know when they do this to me, I know it's to do with jewellery. And she, she said, oh, yeah, she was very fond of her jewellery, you know. She, got, she chose things that she liked. Didn't matter if anybody else didn't like it, she liked it. That was the main thing, you know. And so she's very happy. She's saying, do you wear, wear some of the jewellery sometime, darling? Right. Yeah, because that will bring her really close to you. Right. You know, if you do. But she's very happy you've got it. Now, I don't know, I don't know why, but I, I, I was taken up to London with you for memories. Yes. You yes. understand? I don't know, they're giving me London today all, all the time. Um, it's just bringing back happy memories, you know. She said, we know that during the war things weren't always brilliant and that, you know. But we managed, we just got on with it. And that she's saying, well, that's what we've got to do today. Get on with it, you know. And that's the way she would be, you know. Come on, you know, don't sit on your... 
Just get on with it and go forward, you know. And that's what she was like because that's what she did with her life. She never let things get on top of her. She said, I just look forward. And if things happened well, they've happened, you'll just get over it and go forward, you know. Now, where you take me, darling? I could give you July as well for anniversaries. Yeah, right. yes. I could give you February. Yes. Yes, February. Yeah. That doesn't come up very often. But once a year. Well, yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> now she's taking me to my feet, darling. Is it you that's having yeah. problem with your feet? That's why she's telling you to rest yeah. a bit, you yeah. see. She's saying, put them on a chair, put a cushion under, let the circulation go around, you know. Right. But she's just, you see, isn't it amazing, my love, how aware they are of things in our lives, you know. Yeah. And then people say, oh, it's all a load of rubbish. I don't know you from Adam, do I, darling? Right. You know, I can't, I can't know all of this. I have to rely on them to tell me, you see. But there's such a lot of love coming to you, darling. Such a lot of love. If I could come down there and give you a big hug, I would do, but unfortunately I'm not allowed to, you know. But will you take it from her? I, will. I, will. I don't know what you've got. It's set there must be an anniversary in this month. She just yes, said September is. to me. Don't yeah. leave that one. Dad in the world of spirit as yeah. well, please. Yeah. Ooh. Dad was a man's man, I think, wasn't he? You know, a he but really a gentleman. Was. But a gentleman. But a man's man. I feel a little broader than I am, darling, you know. Yes. And, um, ooh. How can I say this? I don't want to say he was strict, darling, because he had a wonderful heart. But there again, as I said to this lady, he liked things to be right, and especially for the children, because he felt a re great responsibility that the children had to know right from wrong, That's you know? Right. And he felt that a great responsibility there. But as long as the wife and the family were okay, he was he okay. Was okay. <laughs> Will you take his love as well? I'll say, God bless you, darling. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much, friends. Thank you. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Just a few notices very quickly. Our online events coming up this, follow this coming week. Tomorrow, all day long, there is a Spiritist, a Combined Spiritist Association Day dedicated to its World Suicide Prevention Day. And they will be live online from 10 in the morning till 7 at night. This will be shared onto the church Facebook page as of many of the speakers who have given their time to speak for our church during the restrictions. On Friday night, the church presents live online again, Diana Coldman, who will be giving the evening talking of shamanic wisdom and ancient drum healing. Then on Saturday morning at nine o'clock, we have our weekly meditation. And following that, at 10 o'clock in the morning, we have Steve Richards, who will be joining us live from Australia. And he'll be talking about dream time healing from the Aboriginal and the uh, concurrence of that with life energy healing. So that's this Saturday at 10 a.m. Monday at 7 p.m., we have another session of meditation. And also on Saturday the 26th, we have our first venture into holding a Zoom meeting online. This will be a paid for event, the tickets are £8 each, and the medium taking that evening will be Tim Abbott. Then live here in-house within the church, and also live online, this Sunday we have David Collins, and next Wednesday we have Jamie Williamson joining us. And that concludes the notices. Thank you so much. Before I hand over to Jeff for the closing prayer, I would just like to extend deepest gratitude and thanks for such a beautiful, uplifting, wonderful oh, service today, you. both it's of a you. Pleasure. It's always a privilege to come. Oh, honestly, I'd, everybody? Yeah. 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 There you go. Oh, look at that. <laughs> and you are yeah. in the doorway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you, gents. It was a pr Can I privilege. just, before I go into the closing prayer, say to these two lovely people here that your wife, sir, hasn't gone anywhere, mm -hmm. and your mum. No, I know. She may not be here in the physical, but she's very much around you both, in the spiritual. You'll sense her. If you haven't already, you'll sense her drawing close to you. Yes. Okay? Yes. Your mother. Thank you. God bless. Okay. <laughs> Please join me in a closing prayer. Divine and creative spirit, whom we call our Father God, we thank you for the opportunity of being of service to you, to the spirit world, and to spirit here encased in the physical body. 
We thank those who joined us from the world of spirit to bring their love, their inspiration, their knowledge, and most of all, those of our loved ones, families and friends who took the opportunity to draw close this afternoon to bring their messages of love, their messages of encouragement, but most of all, their messages that tell us that there is no death, that life is indeed eternal. And so we ask now that they be returned to their allotted places in the world of spirit with our grateful thanks and our love. We ask a blessing on the president and committee of this beautiful church that the doors may remain forever open for those wishing to enter to gain that spiritual knowledge and upliftment. And a blessing on each head bowed here this afternoon and the families that they represent, that they may walk with your light and your love until we meet again. This we ask in your name, which is eternal love. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Again, gentlemen, thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us live online at home today. Thank you, all you beautiful people that are here within the church. Thank you very much, Todd, also, for all your manning of the camera today, uh, which you can now switch off. And this is where we all... Let our girdles out and everything where you can't watch us. 